The curtain rises on the first act of Virginia City, starring Errol Flynn as Kerry Bradford and Martha Scott as Julia, with Frank McGlynn as Abraham Lincoln. It's 1864, the third year of the war between the states. In Richmond, Virginia, stronghold of the Confederacy, a grim, dark building looms through the mist along the James River. Soldiers guard its iron gates with watchful eyes and ready guns. For this is Libby Prison, where Union captives are held for the duration of the war. But far beneath the ground in the Black Tunnel, three of these Union soldiers are making their bid for freedom. With worn-out, clumsy tools, they work in desperate haste, digging and clawing at the damp earth. They're grimy, unshaven, their blue uniforms torn to shreds. At intervals, they pause in their labor, gasping for air. Uh, uh, Prison powder magazine should be right above us now, Carrie. How much more we... we got to dig. Well, let's see. I figure we've, we've come about 48 feet from the cell. About seven feet more. Seven more feet and we're free. Oh, my pa must have been a beaver. I've been digging so long. All right, Marble. Never mind the talk. Just keep on digging. Come on, I'll ask you too. Oh, sure. Seven more feet. I can do it with my bare hands. Listen. What is it, Sheldon? I heard something. Back there in the cell. All right, you men. I'm out of that tunnel. Kirby. You hear me? I'm out of there. Well, Kirby, what do we do? No use. I've got it. I'm not going back. Let him come down here and kill me. Shut up. I'm not going back to the young child. Come on. We're going back. That tunnel wasn't a bad idea, Captain Bradford. But you see, I happened to learn that you were digging it three days after you started last spring. Three months and twelve days ago. And you didn't stop it, eh? That was mighty nice of you, Irby. Let the boys amuse themselves. Let them get within a couple of feet of escaping from this hole and then shove a knife in them. Very considerate. It was merely my idea of how to prevent an enemy intelligence officer from doing further harm to the Confederacy. You three men know the penalty for a third escape crime? Yeah, firing squad, isn't it? Or would you rather see us hung? I'm going to give you just one more chance, Bradford. Meanwhile, if you want to dig further, you're welcome. Only no matter where you come up, Captain... I'm afraid you'll find a few bandits waiting for you. That's all. Oh, no. No, Abby, that's not quite all. Maybe you'd better have me shot or hung right now. Because if I ever run into you again, anywhere, any time, I'm going to collect for that tunnel every last foot of it. I'll be at your service, Captain. Captain Irvin? Yes? There's a lady waiting to see you, sir. A lady? She said to tell you Miss Julia Haynes, sir. Where is she? In your office, sir. Julie. Hello, Vance. Surprise to see me. Oh, Julia. I wondered if I'd ever see you again. Why didn't you answer my letter? There was nothing to say, Vance. But what about you? What's been happening? I knew you were here, of course. Certain people at Virginia City told me. Oh, it's simple enough. Here, sit down. They gave me this job while I was convalescing from Chancellorsville. Mm-hmm. But I'm fit again, ready for service, as soon as they can find some use for me. Vance, the war is going badly for us, isn't it? Very badly, Judy. The South has nothing left to fight with except the will. Wars are won with gold nowadays, not with men. But if the South had gold, by surprise, arms, powder... Who's going to take us? Jeff Davis is broke. We're lucky if we can last another six months. I'm not thinking about credit. I'm thinking of a gift to the South. Of five million dollars in gold bullion. Sure, crazy. Where in the world could we get it? In Virginia City. But that's a Yankee stronghold. Thank you know Virginia City. It's one of the greatest mining centers in the world. Yes, sir. And the biggest mine owners there are Southerners. Go on, Julie. Dr. Cameron, Armistead, Marshall, all Southerners. Southerners whose loyalty adds up to five million dollars, which they're willing to give to the Confederacy. They can't move it from there without a fight. They need a leader, someone strong, someone who knows all the country between. That's why I came to you. You're the only one who can do it, Vance. Is that the only reason you came to me? Vance, you're my oldest friend. I knew I could trust you. Julie, tell me. Why did you leave your home here and go north? 
Was it because of me? No, I... Tell me the truth. Partly that. Because I wasn't sure. But mostly because I wanted to see life in the world outside. Wanted to be a singer. I had a voice, you know. Then the war and... And the concert stage to singing in the Sazerac Saloon at Virginia City. Truly. Why not? Virginia City's full of Yankees. The Union soldiers talk and I listen. I'm such a good listener. What I hear, I pass on. Well, the Yankees would call me a spy. And that's why you came. To get your help, Van. I want you to see President Davis. Tell him the plan. Will you, Van? I'll arrange for both of us to see him tonight. I hope he certainly fell that next race when he didn't fill out this tunnel. How much more, Captain? Just about finished. There's the floor of the powder magazine. We better talk low. I still don't see what good it's going to do us, Captain. You heard what Irby said. They'll be waiting up there for us. Marblehead, will you please shut up? All right. You bring those rags. All I can get, Captain. Here. But look, Captain. Not them up under the floor. Now, I'll crawl back and get that can of coal oil. Be careful with it. Don't worry, Captain. Coal oil? What are we going to do with that, Captain? Oh, Marblehead, whoever named you is a genius. Look. There's the powder magazine right up there. We're going to drink the rags with coal oil, put a match to it. And crawl back just as fast as we can and wait for the big noise. Oh, oh you, you mean we're going to blow our way out? What else? Or in. We won't know which until tonight. Dan, put that over there, where those soldiers are. Those are earthworks, Julie. The last line of defense. Oh, is it as bad as that? Are they that close? Seventy miles. Pennsylvania Courthouse. But they'll never take Richmond now, Julie. You brought us new life, new hope. Have I? Then, remember the old days. The party father used to give in the old house. <laughs> you were such a funny little boy, Vance, with your tight trousers and red cheeks. We watched the dancing on the stairs. Oh, it was fun growing up together, wasn't it, Vance? I wish it had lasted forever. We were close then. When I was 14, you gave me a ring made of twisted violet skins. And you slapped me when I threw it away. I've thrown away so many things since then, Dan. Sweet things like that. Perhaps if you'd slap me a little harder a minute when you did. Well, you don't. Yes, it's too to live in the past, isn't it? When do you start west? President Davis wants me to leave tomorrow. By troop train to the border, then by stage. We'll meet later, then, in Virginia City. Remember, when we meet there, we've never seen each other before. I'm an expert at that now. Treating friends as strangers and enemies as friends. I'll remember. What is it, Mabel? Yes, look. Over there in the south. What? Who is the People lying around the west walls don't let anyone through. Get in there, Bill. Get in the Bradford cell. Yes, sir. But it's empty. The three prisoners have escaped. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce Captain Terry Bradford, one of our most reliable sources of enemy intelligence. Captain Bradford has just come from Richmond. He knows more inside affairs of the Confederacy than anybody but Jefferson Davis. Isn't that what they say about you, Captain? Well, General Hooker, at the moment I guess I know more about the inside of Libby's prison. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, at the time of his capture, Captain Bradford was tracing a report of gold shipments to Richmond. I said then the report was ridiculous, and I still say so. Am I right, Captain? No, sir. The rebels did receive gold, but only in small amounts. Right now, though, they're planning a much bigger transfer to the value of several million dollars. Where could they get that much gold? Just one place, sir. Three of the richest mines in America happen to be owned by Southern sympathizers out in the Nevada Territory. A town called Virginia City. All they're waiting for is a chance to ship it out. And they will. Unless we get there first. Hmm. How soon can you start for Virginia City, Captain? Any time, sir. We're already packed. Good. Draw what money you need from the paymaster and get the next coach west. And, uh, good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 